Hi, this is Darlene from Quilt Shop Gal. I am uh, sharing with you today a little tutorial for using EQ7 software to plan a row quilt or a table runner um, for AccuQuilt applique dies. I'm actually um, using the Slay and Snowflake die number 55322 to create a row quilt pattern for the EQ Seasons Row Along hosted by Marianne Penna of Seems to Be So. And uh, this row pattern design can be used to combine with other seasonal row patterns that are provided during this blogging event. Or again, you could use this to create a table runner. I've actually used this particular die to create a variety of table runners. But really, this is just a tutorial to show you how a simple tutorial to show you how you'll work with applique dies um, from AccuQuilt in your EQ7 software when you're trying to plan out a project. Okay, to start off with, we are going to create a new project, and um, I'm just going to call it a sample tutorial and click OK and we're going to click on the block work on block mode and I'm going to go block new block and I'm going to create patch draw motif go over to the tracing image and I want to import an image of my actual shape and this again can be a PNG file, a GIF file, JPEG, TIFF. Uh, it just needs to be an image of your your die shape. And I'm not going to do any cropping for it. I'm going to go over here and just click to get my shape to appear so that I can trace it. I'm going to go over to the applique tab. I love the zoom tools zoom in on this sleigh so that we can trace it. I'm going to start off using the Bezier Curve tool. And this, um, a lot of people use it in different ways. You can always go in and do editing after you've drawn out or traced your image. Um, but I like to create nodes along the way. And basically if you hold your left mouse down and drag your mouse tracing around the shape, you can um, go as far as you wish. I like to do it in short little traces where I release my left mouse, hold my left mouse down again and retrace, keep tracing, mouse, left mouse up, release, left mouse down, click, move my mouse, trace, left mouse key down, move my mouse, trace to that point, release, left my mouse down, move my mouse and trace. Anyway, you get the idea. Let me move on and I'll go back through in a minute and show you how I add it. On your last part where you're tracing that whole image, you want to make sure you connect to the original starting point because you want this to be a whole piece so that you can fill it with color or fabric. A um, couple ways to check that is I could use my zoom tools and go in all the way around to make sure all those points were all connected. I can also go over to my color tool and see that this has changed the color so I know it is a connected piece and I can fill it with fabric. That means it's connected, so that's fine. But I need to do some more tracing of the bottom of the sleigh to give it a better effect. I'm going to go use the straight line tool. And again, left click your mouse, hold, drag, release. Left click, hold, drag, release. Make sure those connect. Do the next one. Left 
click mouse hold drag release Go back over to my color tab to make sure that I did draw those in actual boxes and they, they look fine. Go back over to the applique tab and now I want to go in and do some editing to really get this being much more representative of what the acuticle shape will be. Go into my shape tool and I love having fun shaping. It just seems to me so relaxing as I start playing with it and grab those nodes and make them bigger, shorter, rounded. shortening them and playing with them. It's really a matter of how um, close you want it to be. If you were to um, you know, just be using this to kind of play on a basic layout for your own self. Um, you know, unless you're just a real perfectionist, it doesn't have to be that perfect. See this little sharp point here? I want to show you too. If you click on your nodes and a right click and click edit, you get your edit node toolbox up, which gives you all kinds of options. If you're clicked off just any place on your screen, you can see all of those options are grayed out. But once you click on an area, it will show you how to like add a node if you want to have it go fall to the line. So I'm not going to show you all of those, but a few of them today. That one was a little pointy to me. I'm going to smooth it out and play with this a little bit. This one here, I'm going to smooth it out, play with it, and you can kind of get a feeling there of how it gets off or not. Sometimes you may want to click on the center of a line, not on a, a node, and say add a node. And that gives you again another node to drag around and play with. It can be very powerful. Nodes and the edit art tool will soon become your friend along with the handlebars because they really do um, help you edit. If you haven't yet um, played with those and feel comfortable with them, I really um, just encourage you to get in and play with it and do it. Um, scan in a child's, uh, you know, drawing book or something out of a magazine and just play with tracing it. It, it really is just can be a lot of fun. Don't be intimidated. If I want to get super, super precise, again, I can use the zoom tool and get in closer. So I can say smooth that out. You can see how you can drag it, move it up. And it really does help with that zoom tool to get more, more accurate. But since I know I'm going to be doing this with my AccuCult shape, and what I'm doing is, is pulling it into EQ7 to plan out my fabrics, audition my fabrics, kind of put things to scale and see how do I, I want it to look that I don't necessarily for me feel like I have to be super accurate um, at this point of, of shaping it. Okay, I'm going to go out, zoom out, fit, and kind of look at it and say, okay, I think that for me and what I'm doing is good enough. I'm going to say add to sketchbook. <laughs> I'm going to now go over to work on quilt. And I could say quilt, new quilt, and do whatever layout I want, but I know I'm going to be doing a horizontal, which is the default. Um, for this table runner, what I'm going to do is make it, oh, I'm just kind of playing around here, but let's say the width is 7.5, the height of my blocks is going to be 10. And I am going to have, let's say, eight blocks horizontally and one vertically. You could take borders off if you wish or leave them. Um, at this point, it doesn't really matter. 
I'm going to go over to layer 2, which is our, our applique tab. I'm going to go set a block. I'm going to go to my motifs. I'm going to click on my sleigh and drag it over here. Now, this is where um, I, I really like using EQ7 to plan out my AccuQuilt applique shapes on my project design. Is um, Sometimes it's hard to visualize and say, okay, an applique shape is a certain size. When you use a die cut, you can't change the size. It's going to be fixed. So now you have to kind of get a feeling of the project you're designing it, will it work with that pre-cut shape once you've cut it? And um, again, the scaling is kind of hard. We know we've set this block to be 10 inches high and 7 inches wide. So we want to get a feeling as how is that pre-cut going to look? But the power of, of EQ7 is any time when you bring in your motif is you can change that size up or down inside of your project. You can make it really, really big or really, really small. But the thing is, is that doesn't tell you with respect to the die cut how is it going to look on your project. So to do that, I like using the tape measure tool. And we know the specs on this particular sleigh, according to the AccuQuilt website, it's 5 and 7 16 inch by 4 inches. So if we hold our left click down on our mouse and drag across to the other side, we can see how large it is right now in our current view. And that's only 3.4 inches wide. So it's not an accurate um, visual. For what it's going to really look like on these on the blocks on this side. So I enlarge it a little bit. I'm going to go back and use my measuring tool, measure it again. Um, I've enlarged it to 4.6 and really again I need it at 5 and 7 sixteenths. So much bigger, which I think it makes it actually look better on this block. Drag it again, and I've got it 5.2, so I can make it a little bit bigger. Reach over here. Okay, 5.6. I can go just a tad, um, but I actually think that's pretty pretty good. And the height is supposed to be four inches, so just kind of double check. And it's about about 3.8, so I may have distorted it. I can enlarge it up, up just a little bit. And again, for planning, is since it's on the applique layer, is if this were my reindeer, what I'm shooting for is to have my reindeer fairly low and then move them up higher and higher and higher to where they're up at the top of my blocks toward the left as if they're actually taking off and flying off in sky. I could even use my rotate tool and rotate my reindeer. But for now, I'm just working on my sleigh and I want my sleigh firmly on the ground over on the right hand side. So that is pretty simple, but I hope it shows you, again, how you can use your at EQ7 software to plan out your designs using your AccuQuilt applique shapes. And I will be making this uh, design with the reindeers taking off, and I'll be releasing it in a blog post that I have where this video tutorial will be announced. But I'm hoping this uh, tutorial just gives you a little bit more ideas of um, using your EQ7 with your AccuQuilt applique shapes. Thanks for watching. Have a very creative day.